we've talked about where we want to be, right? So we want to have this trackable process that gets everybody to get paid for based on their success. Uh, we want to have people like Sergey or other data-oriented people as a part of the marketing team that will be able to actually build this kind of machine. Uh, we need to have content at the end of the day. We don't care about the way that the banners look like. If there is any uh, graphic designer here, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, oh yeah, 15% this is usually, yeah. Um, but let's talk, let's do a, a bit of a deep dive. So we started working with marketing automation a year ago. It changed our processes, it changed our clients' processes. How many here implemented a marketing automation platform in their marketing organization? Okay. How many of you heard about marketing automation as a buzzword, but don't really know why the hell do they need to pay so much money for these strange products of companies that, does, that do tons of eBooks? Okay, so let's start talking about technology a bit, okay? This is the geeky part, right? Uh, so let's start talking about technology. So we have, let's say that we have the content, we're gonna talk about content in, in a second, but content needs to sit on something which is, you know, the technology behind it. So what do you guys do? Um, okay, so going back to what I've talked about, uh, drawing a funnel of pipes where uh, traffic comes from and needs to go through a certain process before it becomes a lead and a win, then I'll try to review for two minutes all of the technical systems we're using. This might sound uh, complicated, but it's actually not. And I don't recommend, recommend... Um, uh, it's actually not. No, it's not, it's not. But uh, I don't recommend... Uh, the understatement of the year. It's very <laughs> simple. Everybody can do it in the garage, right? These are the only 28 systems that you're using. Yeah. Exactly. And we have four people just connecting yeah. the dots between them. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> so first of all, I think everything begins with the way you uh, publish or advertise or distribute your content. For example, if you're on an ongoing basis use uh, social networks and you're uh, posting uh, statuses on Facebook and tweeting, there are two ways of doing it. So you can go to each of the platforms and simply use it. And you can use a technology that, uh, let's say a platform that distributes content for you on the platforms, but then it's trackable. Because if you just go to each social network and post it there, the chances that you would be able to late, later on know who came from a specific um, group on LinkedIn with a specific content would be much harder than ju just using one social platform or uh, monitoring platform that is able to uh, post everything on your behalf on all the social platform platforms and then track it back to your website. Now the second thing is, think about it, if people came to your website, they can contact you via uh, filling out a form, uh, calling you, um, maybe uh, having a live chat with one of your agents. We have to make sure that each of them, each of these systems, your email system, your, ch your live chat, which I recommend highly, your telephone system, is all synced to one system that is able to uh, track all of the leads so you can later on see, see all of them on the same system. So it's very problematic when you use one telephone system, a different live chat system, but nothing is synced. That's the, th the second uh, systems with, that we have to think about, the way customers are contacting us. The, the third one is the marketing automation. So I, w I won't start explaining a bit, but when I discovered marketing automation, I couldn't understand how could I market before without having it. Because actually that's the system that syncs all of the other systems into it and eventually all of the information about a lead would be tracked there. So the marketing automation system, uh, same as Google Analytics, has tracking pixels on your, all of your websites, all of the pages, and it's synced with your live chat or telephone or whatever, and it, it gets the leads for the first time it uh, filters the leads, it scores them, it, it nurtures them, and it's synced to your CRM, which is the next system I wanted to talk about. So the CRM, which is Salesforce or uh, Microsoft Dynamics, we all know them. Salesforce or Salesforce, Salesforce, or, Salesforce. or Salesforce. Yeah, yeah. mainly Salesforce. So, um, so the, the way we can <laughs> sync between our marketing automation and Salesforce, what it, what it allows us to do basically 
Um, eventually, my goal would be that if we have thousands of leads, marketing and sales can work together without even exchanging one word between them because everything is synced, is synced between the systems and everyone are synced with the funnels and procedures. So uh, if we have more leads, then we can make a higher threshold so not all of the leads will go to sales. But eventually, when I look at all of the system, when you get to synchronize on an effective way the tracking, the social, the content that you're distributing, the leads that you're getting, the CRM that the sales are using, then you create a very effective marketing and sales funnel. And it requires a bit of help. For example, we're using to manage, managing Salesforce and, and marketing automation is not something that you can do just, you know, 10% uh, 10, 10 of your time. You need someone either half time or taking an outsource company as we're using that, it, that manages it for you because to really optimize the funnel, it's a daily, um, it's daily work, checking the campaigns, um, defining them, looking at the funnel, looking at the leads, getting insights from your sales guys. It's not something I recommend doing just on the way, if you're a marketing manager and you can think, yeah, I can also manage marketing automation and Salesforce. No, these are technical systems. They require lots of experience. And I can tell you, for example, that we're, we're using Marketo, which is a marketing autom automation system. Forget about getting any insights from it before <laughs> three months of using it. I mean, it takes at least three months of very hard work with a professional integrator to get it. But once it works, it's amazing. It allows you as a marketing manager to see everything on one system, manage everything from one system. And for us, for Encapsa at least, it made the, the biggest change. At this point, I have no idea what the question was, but I want to continue what Dory started. Uh, a few things about uh, marketing automation tools. First of all, we also use Marketo. Uh, that, that's our tool of choice. Uh, I can tell you that we, at a certain point, um, last time was a couple of years ago, did a very in-depth evaluation that took us two or three months against Eloqua, which is the second uh, leader in that field. We decided to go with uh, Marketo. Um, I'll fill in the reasons if you want in the break after the, afterwards. So that's our tool of choice. Um, one of the first positions, I think it was the third member of my team. I, I remember I've been at Panaya for five years. We now have a marketing team of 15 people. The third member of the team was a marketing automation specialist. Marketing automation specialist, that's a mini IT team within marketing. I don't think a modern marketing team can survive without an IT team, either like Dory explained, by outsourcing it or having an in-house IT team, which is a one person, one man show within your marketing department. I don't know how to run a marketing department today without an IT person. Um, wherever I go next, that's gonna be the second or third positions that I hire. You have to get one, okay? Leave the graphic designer for last. You can always, <laughs> sorry graphic designers, uh, we're bashing them today. You can hire graphic designers from the outside. You can get a lot of things done from the outside. You need a marketing automation specialist. There are very few people in Israel that can do that. You don't have to get them in Israel, but, which is nice if you can. You need someone to do all that IT stuff. Like Dory explained, this is a daily job that takes hours of work. And as you start doing weekly campaigns, you're going to get a lot of data accumulated. You want to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Uh, let me give you a quick example, and then I'll go into what I'm sure lots of you want to know is what other tools are you guys using? Who wants to know about actual tools we're using? OK, it's not just me. Um, so a couple of things. Just a, a quick example of something that uh, a lot of marketers that I talk to, I uh, talk to them about trade shows. Who here um, exhibits at trade shows? Okay, pretty much everyone. How many of you can track six months after the trade show? How many people you met at the trade show? How many of them were new to your CRM system? How many of them are at early, middle, and late stage opportunities? And how many of them closed business? And how many dollars did you make for every dollar you invested in the show? Okay, I'm not alone, which is good news, but most of you can't figure that out. Okay, this is something that we developed with our internal IT system. We built an, a trade show ROI calculator into Salesforce. When I show these to, this to other marketeers who haven't seen something like this, their jaw drops. Okay, I can tell you six months and two years after a show exactly how many dollars to every dollar I invested I made at that show, 
how many opportunities are in which stages in the pipeline, how many new accounts I met, how many old accounts I met, et cetera, et cetera. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. If you can't manage it, you can't improve it. Okay, how are you going to request budget for the same show next year if no one turned into business from last year's show? Okay, I, I can't do that. So I measure everything and I improve it. And if the show sucked last year, I'm not going to include it in my budget next year. So that's an example of marketing automation and what it can do for you if you have the right people in IT. Um, a few of the tools that we, ch we chose at Panay and we use. So we use Marketo as our marketing automation system. Uh, we use a very exotic CRM system, salesforce.com. It was mentioned here a couple of times. Um, and the two systems are deeply integrated one with another. Uh, we did a lot of custom development within Salesforce. Uh, we decided to pass on a lot of third-party tools that were annual subscription. Don't you just hate those companies that charge you an annual subscription? We uh, decided to forgo a lot of those products and develop our own tools. For example, for trade show ROI analysis, for um, sales pipeline analysis, we developed a lot of these tools in-house. Um, if you still decide to go for an outside tool because you don't have a, a business application team large enough, I suggest you look at Cloud9. Cloud9, they do uh, sales pipeline analysis, which is, is very easy uh, to use. It looks very good. Costs a lot of money, but if you, uh, if you can develop it in-house, look at that tool. That, that was our runner-up um, if we wouldn't develop our own system. A couple of other tools, uh, we use Octopost. Daniel's sitting there, I said you should talk to him in the break. I think every one of the three of us uses Octopost. We use them for posting and monitoring our social media activities. So they allow you to automatically post on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, everything, and measure what you're getting there and who's sharing and who's liking. Um, other, use, other, other tools that we're using are Insightera, uh, spelled exactly what it sounds like. Write Insight and then add E-R-E-E-R-A, -E 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 so Insightera. Uh, they're an Israeli company, so is Octopus, so is most of these tools I'm talking about, by the way. Lots of Israeli yeah, companies. Is Tamar here? Who's here? Say hi. Insightera is there. Okay, so her boss, Mike, he's a great guy. Uh, we've been working with him for a while. I say he's a great guy because he took me to a conference in San Francisco three months ago. Um, no, he really is a great guy. And what Insightera do is they show you dynamic, targeted content the changes in real time on your website. That sounds fancy, right? What it actually does is, for a company like Panaya, that I have audiences that are both, or either, uh, an SAP-oriented audience or an Oracle-oriented audience, I can identify a company coming into my website and in real time change my homepage to show them Oracle content or SAP content, depending on where they're coming from, what their previous behavior on our website was, uh, what uh, Dun and Bradstreet say about their company, what their company size is, a million different things. I can do lots of fancy A-B testing um, and try different campaigns on them. I can gain more exposure uh, for my content, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to sound like I'm working for them. So check them out. Uh, they're, they're good stuff. They're interesting. There are other companies here who do similar stuff as well. Um, was there anything else I wanted to talk about automation? No, I think I've said enough. So, <laughs> you go. <laughs> well, um, nothing to add on the, uh, on the Marketo Salesforce. Um, however, since uh, you, do, you mentioned developer, assuming you're starting again, it depends on really on, on where you are and based on, on the numbers that we just um, asked you to, could be that in terms of the number of fleets, you're not there yet. There are different systems uh, besides Marketo, which are typically easier to use and faster to deploy. Um, I used HubSpot for a while, working uh, really, really nicely, a lot of uh, social integration. Um, Pardot. Pardot also, uh, something that I've used. I think HubSpot is easier, at least for me. Pardot is now part of Salesforce, so. But uh, in any case, there are options, okay? And I, I totally agree. Once you're past this stage, you need a developer. You need someone in-house taking care of everything. Uh, even if you're very technical, um, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, other tools, maybe that uh, if, if we mention tools, um, we're using something very cool. Again, small thing, but uh, I, fi I find it uh, extremely useful, called Tout, T-Out. Um, aimed for uh, tracking all of our emails. Marketo has it, um, this functionality, but the fact that it's all sorted out in templates, very easy to, uh, to work with, then you can measure everything. Again, coming back to measurements, um, you can see you know, different emails and how they've been uh, 
tracked and then things like that. And again, of course, everyone that opened and sent email, that's, that's obvious. One thing I forgot, which <laughs> is... Um, we have 10 more systems. Very simple. <laughs> no. It's very simple. At least for SaaS companies, we have... Usually SaaS companies um, offer some kind of a free basic uh, service, like a freemium uh, model. So for me, the holy grail is really uh, also succeeding, uh, integrating your service, your web application, with the marketing automation system. Because one of the things we want to track is let's say someone has signed up for our free plan or one of our paid plans. I mean, if we could track what he's doing on the web application, is he active or not? Has he paid or not? Where he is on the funnel of activating the service, if that's integrated into uh, the marketing automation system, it's usually via API, then you really get all of the information you need, not only on the leads, but are actually on your customers, because one of the things we want to do is retention. We want to make sure that customers are keeping using our system, they are active, they are logging in, etc. So one thing I, I don't recommend passing uh, on is seeing if there is a way to integrate your systems, uh, uh, whatever the, your customers are using, with the marketing aut automation system. Uh, I'd just like to add to that. As you can see, it's extremely simple. <laughs> very, very simple. Uh, we will, uh, first of all, we will add the 655,000 links uh, to the tools that we just mentioned to, uh, to the website that we're launching for B2B Talks. We also send it all to you uh, in an email after the event. Um, regarding marketing automation, Marketo, Pardot, great products. Uh, very, very, very flexible. Uh, They're very, very good, especially though, we have to say that, if you have deep pockets in two ways, one, to pay their license fee, and two, to have this internal team. Uh, there, are other <coughs> there are other tools that are out there. One of them, a disclaimer, we represent them, but one of them is Acton, which is a simpler marketing automation tool, very, very good when you need to ramp up the operation in a, a, a relatively lower cost, uh, and still get many of the features that are exist in the more sophisticated tool out there. Um, there is another tool, Acton. Acton. Um, another tool that is uh, very, very useful that we use for our clients and many of our clients also use uh, directly is uh, a tool called Nimble. Uh, especially if you are in the complex sales world when the engagement with each prospect is very, very long and you really need to know a lot about the person. Um, Nimble is, uh, um, is a kind of, now they ruined the video for everyone. Uh, Nimble is a, a social CRM tool that enables you to, con it's connected also to the exotic uh, CRM system we talked about before. Uh, it connects to Salesforce, it connects to other marketing automation tools. And as soon as you put a first name, last name, and an email address in it, you get all the data uh, from the social networks about a specific person. The important point for B2B marketeers is, of course, the fact that you can get data from LinkedIn. So you're able to get from a first name, last name, and an email address, title, company, and so on, all the lead qualification uh, points. Um, what we do for our clients, what happens with a lot of our clients after we stop working with them also, of course, is of course the basic notion, measurement is everything. What you can't measure does not exist, okay? Um, and when you're talking about awareness, that we didn't talk a lot at all about it, uh, there are also additional things that need to be measured. Uh, in the previous panel, we, uh, people said that the only role of marketing is to bring in leads. Uh, but leads start with awareness. So there's another tool that we're using a lot um, even though it's less targeted for, uh, for B2B marketers, but it's still very, very helpful in order to understand what is the overall uh, view of a market. And this is tracks uh, that enables you to really take a topic, identify all the key people talking about it. And then you can, if you build a smart process, you can basically take the people from, that you have identified there and push them through, uh, through the funnel. If you use this, the disclaimer, then I can use as well, right? Yes, of course. Just, uh, as I, as I told you, I joined Sysense a month ago. And uh, one of the things that I had the chance, for me it was the first time, is using business analytics, our own product, uh, throughout marketing. And guys, this is amazing. And I know I'm selling you something here. So there are different tools, I, I assume, that can do the thing. But still, getting the whole uh, systems that uh, we know, you know, we have in Marketo, we have in Salesforce the ability to have 
a lot of reports, but having everything integrated into one solution, business analytics, with dashboard that can really mash up all these sources and create different kind of dashboard that for me, again, as I said, it was a complete surprise, an amazing one, really good one, uh, and take you through some, uh, some really, a whole different level of, of analyzing your data. So. Okay, before we, uh, we move on to the next couple of questions, question from the audience. Yes. Uh, can you go please to uh, 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 yeah, just a quick question. Everything is nice with B2B SaaS uh, solution. What about B2B to enterprise solution? Like you're sending a chat to management and then you don't send it over the internet. Okay, so the question was how do you use all those cool things when you are not selling uh, a SaaS product? So I, I can start from some of our clients. Some of our clients are selling to telecom uh, vendors. Uh, there are telecom vendors selling to telecom operators, which is exactly that. Um, it's a different kind of challenge, but a lot of the things that were, we talked about don't really change because at the end of the day, you still reach the target audience through the same channels. It might well be that in specific markets, event will be more important than a LinkedIn group. But at the end of the day, you need to track your leads you need to, um, to know how to bring them into your website. You, know how to, you need to know how to uh, mm -hmm. evaluate the quality of each of the sources of the traffic that you're bringing in. Uh, and you need to know how to nurture them in the best way. Now, at least automatic nurturing with complex sales doesn't, at least to my, my feeling, okay, and what we saw with our clients, doesn't work that well. You still need to have this sales guy that really knows the relevant person from the, from the company. But the basic ideas that were discussed here are relevant to every marketing operation, uh, especially in B2B. You need to know who, how people found you. You need to know how to track it. You need to put an ROI uh, number to it. Uh, you need to be able to go back to old leads and know where to uh, warm them up. You need to have all those signals in your website to know that someone is warming up. Um, just the, the, the weight of that, when you're looking at the whole uh, sales funnel, is different between pure SaaS play and you know, products that are being sold in complex sales to enterprises. This, this is my input. Are you really selling jet planes? <laughs> Almost. So l let me take the jet planes example and just show how we uh, convert some of what we discussed here, how I would sell jet planes um, tomorrow. First of all, not everything is online, okay? We, at Panaya, we do about 40, that's four zero trade shows a year. Okay, that's a lot of trade shows, that's uh, offline activity. We track everything online later, but here's just a, a sample story of, story of how I would go about uh, selling jet planes. I'll go to the trade show for luxury items where my uh, uh, probable clients are walking around, okay? I would not try and showcase my product too much and show all the features, because next to me there are gonna be 10 other booths showing their yachts and jet planes and everyone's showing their product, it's great. I would do something totally different. What I'm trying to do there is lead generation. I would turn my booth into a lead generation machine. I would try and grab the business cards or scan everyone who walks by the booth. The way to do that is not show the screws under the hood of the jet plane. It's by giving them a cool prize that they can take home to the kids, okay? Panaya has become somewhat famous for kid prizes. Uh, we've been giving away anything from teddy bears to remote control helicopters to kites to God knows what. They've been working extremely well in getting people to line up for them, okay? You wouldn't believe what IT directors earning $200,000 a year will lie, <laughs> beg, and steal, include try work all night to take off a, a non-removal sticker that we put on their badge the previous day of the show and they come by then in his face say, oh I've never been here before can I play again and then they'll, they'll come and, and talk about their second child which also needs a prize or else you, they can't come home so I would give away um, cool prizes forget the baseball bats the baseball hats and, and mugs and notepads okay no one wants those give something cool and interesting hopefully that's related to your product okay it could be a toy jet plane or something like that give those out Collect as many leads as you can. Uh, Panaya has come to the point where we go to a three-day trade show and we come back with 4,000 leads from a booth, okay? That's 4,000 leads that we scan at a three-day trade show. Uh, if you want to know how, come to my workshop on trade shows in two weeks, how to build a killer trade show booth. That's a different story. I had to do some self-promotion. Everyone was doing. <laughs> so I would start with that, okay? Now that's not enough. I collected 4,000 leads at the trade show. Now. 
you want to know if they're considering buying a jet plane this year. You want to know if they're the decision maker for buying a jet plane. How do I do that? So before you go to the trade show, you prepare an email campaign. This is where automation comes in again. Prepare with Marketo or Pardot or Acton or whatever email system you're using. Prepare a follow-up email to everyone at the trade show. You send it out the morning after the trade show. It says, hi, Bob. It was great seeing you at the booth last week. I don't care if you saw Bob at the booth. He was at the show. He thinks he met you. Hi, Bob. It was great seeing you at the booth last week. I hope you enjoyed the prize you took home for your kids. Here's some piece of content I thought you'd find useful. And then you send him something like the latest trends in jet planes for rich people like you or whatever it is you want to send him. Now, all you need to do to download Bob is click here. When he clicks here to download, you ask him three qualifying questions, which is what you really want to know. And if your content is good enough, he'll give you the answers. So you ask him, do you have a budget for a jet plane this year? Um, are you considering one or more of these models? Whatever. Ask him your two, three qualifying questions. If the content is good enough, they will give you their details. Okay. Now, if you set it up right, you don't have to ask for his personal details again because you already scanned him at the show. So you don't ask for his email and phone number and title and name. You have all that. Your email automation system takes care of the fact that when you send him out an email, it looks anonymous to him. You're asking him for two or three qualifying questions. He doesn't care answering them. Your email automation system with the smart guy that sits in the back knows how to connect that data. And the morning you come into the office after the show, you have the 4,000 leads that you met at the show. 1,500 of them already answered your three qualifying questions. And now you can tell your salespeople what are their best bets to start calling. Okay, So that's one approach I would take to selling jet planes to enterprises. Is there a question? Where do I get a jet plane? <laughs> He's selling them. <laughs>